Well, it's been a fast start to the year with February already upon us. I'm Robert Cavino, and this is MIA January Edition. Well, the start of the year with ADS has had a incline to all three cohorts. We've had not-for-profits increase about 50 cents, and the private operators traveling at about 188.60, and overall industry ADS hovering around 178. Occupied beds for the period has also been uh, a bit mixed. The private operators have held steady at 88.6% of occupied beds, where the not-for-profits did decline slightly, uh, as well as the overall industry average to about 91% of occupied bed days. Well, I thought we'd spotlight again the occupancy trends as we've seen since June of last year. We did unpack this back in December and looked at it compared to home care and ACAR round releases and did see that the industry has continued to absorb some of those available beds. What we did do though is we looked into the private sector and specifically we looked at facilities that were below a 60% occupancy level. And we assume that those facilities are either commissioning or refurbishing their sites, meaning that a number of their beds are available, but they're not full because of these refurbishment activities. We stripped out those facilities from our occupancy data and looked to normalize it and see what the trends do show. As you see from the graph in front of you, What's happened here is that since June, we still see a downward trend. However, the overall occupancy level of the private operators is hovering slightly at around 90% as opposed to 88.6 was what we are in the current month of January. We'll continue to watch these trends, but as a result, we are still in a downward trend of occupancy rates across the industry. And like I said, we'll continue to review this and please reach out for any feedback or comments you may have on this as well. Overall claiming activity for the month of January was also a bit mixed. The not-for-profits did decline slightly to 7.1% of all submitted claims in that period. The private operators did go up slightly as well um, to about 10% of the overall claim base was uh, claimed through the month of January. Overall, the industry was traveling about uh, flat at 7.9% of claims. The voluntary claiming activity or proactive claiming was also mixed across the board. We had the uh, private operators uh, increase slightly to about 3% of voluntary claims being submitted in January. This brought the industry to about 2.4% of voluntary claims submitted in the January period. The overall percentage of ACFI claims that are greater than 12 months, indicating that they're eligible for some form of voluntary ACFI claiming, was pretty flat as well for the January period. We saw no change in uh, the private operators and a slight change in not-for-profits, which led to the industry relatively being unchanged at 34.6% of their claims being eligible for a voluntary or greater than 12 months old. The average ACFI KPI for newly admitted residents to departed or discharged residents was also a bit mixed, but growing closer to that $20 a day variance or KPI that we suggest operators try to achieve. We did see the not-for-profits grow slightly to $27 a day variance, but overall the industry is still traveling about $25 a day from the average of incoming residents to the average of departing act fees of their discharged residents. Within the complex healthcare domain, we did see a trending upwards continued across the 4Bs and Procedure 5s. 4Bs, all three segments did increase slightly, with the industry at about 38% of claims having a 4B attached to it. However, this is still being led by the private operators at about 50% now, and that is continuing to trend up. For the pressure area care procedure, which is again an indication of acuity of residents, we did see that slightly grow as well across all three segments. Private operators are still leading at just above 45% of claims, with the industry at 37.5% of pressure area care claims submitted against their ACT fees. Within our workforce data, we did see a bit of a mix across non-care hours and care-related hours on a per-bed, per-day basis. We saw non-care hours increase by about 3%, with care hours declining to about 2%. If we unpack the care hours, though, we did see the RN hours decline slightly by about 3%. However, we did see a, a significant drop-off in agency hours, as expected over the holiday period, by about 61.5%. Well, thanks for joining me today. The team at Miras Australia will be at the Leaders Summit on the 22nd of March, presented by Do Come Monday Media. We hope to see you there. And this is a time for new thinking in 2019 for the village and care operators. For more information on this event, please see the link below. I'm Robert Cavino, and this is January Mia. Until next time, please keep doing what you do.